it really is good to be back in training camp and to be able to see, you know, everybody in person, man. This is way better than Zoom, much better. So, uh, and the weather that we're getting, you know, as a player, I don't think you can complain a whole lot. This is terrific weather uh, to be able to be in training camp. It almost doesn't feel like training camp. Uh, it feels, I mean, it feels so good. You know, you, you kind of want them sweating and complaining about the heat a little bit, but uh, this is going to be a great day for us to be able to get some work in, and we're all looking forward to it. So, great to see everybody. Leslie, what have, your, what have been your early impressions of uh, Greg Russo and Carlos Basham, both of them together? Yeah. You know, throughout the spring and now here in training camp, we've really been impressed with their attitude and their work ethic, and they really picked up where they left off at in OTAs. They're really smart guys, and we were concerned early on, you know, how much we could throw at them when it comes to the volume of the defense. But they both have handled it extremely well, and it doesn't seem too big for them uh, at this point. Now, we haven't put on pads yet. Uh, we still have some more installation to go. But uh, at this point, we're very pleased with where they are, uh, just doing a lot of good things. Leslie, what do you make of, you know, yesterday uh, when Boogie had that pick six? Yeah. Just what, what are your impressions of that for, you know, a rookie to make such a big play? I know it's yeah. early, but. Yeah. No, it was impressive. I mean, to be able to, because we talk about takeaways all the time. And for him to bat that ball the way he did and didn't have the wherewithal to focus and catch it, uh, that's, a, that's a big deal. It showed his athleticism and. Uh, just the mindset that he has. And we, we think he's capable of making plays like that once we get into real football as well. So it's, it's really good to see. Uh, even though it's practice and it's training camp, you, you love to see that. Leslie, when Micah Hyde talks about that and how tall they are and how big they are. Yeah. And he said, aside from the fact they're athletic and big, just, have, just given the fact how big they are, is, is they can have maybe an intimidating presence when they walk on the field against an opponent. I mean, is there, th th does that factor matter? Is, th is, there, is, is there something to that? I, I think there is, John. You know, and the, and you look back at a season ago, we were one of the smaller D-lines in the National Football League, maybe the smallest. And now there's been a, a real transformation. Uh, Brandon Bean has done a great job of getting us some length and size and then, you know, having star back. I think it does make a difference to an opponent when they look across and see some big burly guys over there versus some little small guys that are fighting and, and doing everything they can but really don't match up size-wise. So uh, I'm, I, I like this way better than the other way. This is, this is better. So I, I take our chances with, with some size. Last time so. we talked with you, you said, um, you know, you got good pressure. You just couldn't finish sometimes last yeah. year. And now you yeah. just said about the length that you have. Do you think that could be the difference? Just that little bit of length, maybe a little bit of extra to get to, get to the quarterback and maybe that, that extra finger to get on him? I think it'll definitely help Sal. You know, still, you got to have the talent. Uh, and I think we have some guys that are talented. Both of the guys that we talked about earlier, both Carlos and Greg, have added some talent to our D-line and then, of course, getting star back as well. But uh, you still got to be able to finish, and, and you have to be talented enough to be able to do that. And uh, the length would definitely make a difference, uh, whether it's batting balls or just that extra inch to reach out and, and grab a quarterback. Uh, it should help us. So, Leslie, how does the return of Star kind of permeate through the rest of this defense? Uh, a lot of, I guess, maybe the narrative around the return is, okay, Ed Oliver is you know, most impacted, but we, we heard Brandon and Sean say it goes even further than that, that Tremaine and Matt also will, will feel kind of the impact of the return. So how deep does his return really go? Uh, you know, I, I know it uh, impacts me personally, Marcel. I'm, I'm excited to see him back. and. You know, I've told him that multiple times, and uh, I think for our linebackers, as well as the other D linemen, uh, whether it's Jerry Hughes, uh, our young guys that are getting acclimated to how we do things, uh, Star's presence makes a difference. Uh, he's not a guy who's very vocal. You know, you're not going to see him out screaming and yelling and giving speeches, but just the way he handles himself in practice and meetings, uh, it sends a, a reverberation throughout our, our defensive line and throughout our entire defense, his work ethic. Uh, his ability to make plays, um, it's going to impact our entire defense. Uh, you know, it goes beyond just the linebacker position or the D-line. It affects our secondary as well. Having a guy who's big and stout uh, in the run game to help us in the early downs to try to get people in passing situations, uh, he'll, you know, we're, we're, we're happy to have him back for sure. Given, knowing that there were, you had a, a limited training camp and not a lot of hitting, you had to, and Star wasn't there, and you had to uh, customize yourself. 
to familiarize yourself with a lot of new players. Overall, though, and, and, and things got better at the end, but overall, was last year's defensive production up to Bill's standards? Yeah, considering the factors that you, that you mentioned, I mean, you can always do better. You know, even when we're our top five defense, you always feel like you can do a little bit better. And hopefully in 2021, you know, we'll improve on 2020 and just be the best version of ourselves in 2021. But uh, there was definitely some things we would like to be better at in 2020, but you have to be able to move on from that and get ready for 21. And this is a new group. New schedule, uh, different opponents, uh, and you got to get acclimated to these, these guys that we have. But for sure, the, the way you led into the season was just so different. You had to kind of feel your way as the year went on. And I really thought our guys found their legs as the year went on, and we really began to come along, and uh, it was good to see. As you look ahead in mid-October, and I, I know that's a long way away, but you play the two teams that really hurt you in back-to-back -back road games, Tennessee and Kansas City. I mean, how much are you e eager to see how to see how this team responds to that challenge, given how the defense may have struggled against those two teams last year? Yeah, you know, I don't I don't look at it quite that way, John. I, I see the entire season, and for us, it's like week to week. You know, what we'll be like in October is so hard for me to predict at this point. Um, it's really about getting ready for that opener and then just progressing throughout the season where you're playing your best football, you know, in December. That's the goal. And there's going to be a hiccup along the way in an NFL season. You just got to be able to respond the right way, be able to handle some adversity. It's rare in our league you can have just smooth sailing without uh, some adversity along the way. It's just how, how do you handle that? Can you rebound from it? Uh, can you move on? And it may not be those two games. It may be somebody else. Uh, you got to be able to handle that. And that's... I mean, that's part of the maturing and development of your, your team and your defense as well. You mentioned last year trying to get chemistry with the defensive line and that how that took a little bit and maybe contributed to some of the issues. You got a lot of depth there coming into this camp. Mm -hmm. How do you balance developing that chemistry and being ready week one with trying out all these combinations with all of the depth and versatility in that group? Yeah, you know, you have one less preseason game, John, so that makes a little bit of difference uh, as you're trying to you know, put your plans together, how you want to uh, be able to determine, you know, what groups should be working together and, and then bring them along uh, to where they're really at a hot plan at a high level by the time we get to Pittsburgh. Uh, so we've got some things we've got to work through, but I like the problem that we have because I, I think we do have quality depth and it's a good problem to have. I mean, you want it that way rather than the other way. So we'll see how it unfolds as we, we, we get along. Uh, looking forward to when we get pads on. Uh, you can really find out, you know, a lot about guys once you get pads on. Kind of early right now, uh, but we got time, Plus so we'll see. Does having so many returning starters affect your approach as a coach at this stage of training camp? Yeah, that's a good question. And I, I really like uh, the fact that we have the number of returners that we do. We were, myself and some of the coaches were talking about it this morning and yesterday as well. The, the communication by our players and the communication between the coaches and players it's, it's almost seamless at this time of the year compared to, you know, in years past, uh, and especially last year and even the year before, where you didn't, we didn't have an offseason last year, so you felt like you had to go back and reintroduce everything knowing that the retention was going to be a lot smaller than it would have been otherwise. Whereas this year, it feels like we were just in OTAs yesterday, you know, uh, the way we kind of picked up where we left off and then having so many guys that have heard the language over and over and over, you know, Michael Hyde or Jordan Poirier, even Tremaine, they could teach some of the things that we do. I mean, they, they know it as well as we do as, as players. So uh, that gives us, I think, an advantage in some ways uh, from a learning curve standpoint. But still, you got to go out and, and perform. Uh, but it definitely helps to have the experience returning. Leslie, I know you said it's hard to think about what this defense could look like in October. But when you dream it up and you dream about the potential of this group, what specifically does it look like to you this year based on the different players that you have on your defense? Well, I'm excited about our guys, uh, for sure. I mean, to have as many guys returning as we do and really, you know, uh, the, the one spot we probably have a battle is probably at the right corner position, you know, uh, Levi and Dane Ballin over there and maybe one of the young guys may show up as well. But um, we have the potential to be a really good defense. Uh, but 
I mean, you could say that almost every year, but we have some quality depth that gives us a chance, and hopefully we can, you know, deal with the injuries that may come along the way. Uh, but for me, it's really about the now instead of looking ahead. It's just hard to do. I just know how important it is to stay in the moment. And for us, we got to take advantage of this training camp and get the most out of it and get our guys to where when we walk on the field against Pittsburgh, they'll, they're feeling good about themselves and, and about our defense. And everything else will kind of take care of itself from there. Hey, Leslie, if I could flip it around for just a second. Um, as a defensive coordinator, the, the wide receiver group that this team has out there, uh, the depth, and we know the top end is really good, but even the depth throughout. Can you share a few thoughts from a defensive coordinator's perspective of how good this group you know, really is, the, the different skill sets they all have? Yeah, our receiving core has got to be one of the elite receiving cores in the league. Uh, you talk about Stefan, just him him alone. Uh, he's one of the premier guys in our league, and then you add Cole. And, and now just to see how Gabe has come along, uh, I think Dawson is going to have a big year. We have a uh, an outstanding receiving core, and as you mentioned, the depth is there also. So uh, it's great for our defense to be able to go against those guys in practice and and it's kind of a, a measuring stick because we know we're going against some of the best in the league every single time we practice. And uh, it's good for our team, good for our, our, our defense as well. But we got some elite guys for sure. Leslie, what have you seen of Saran Neal's development over the years? Yeah, Saran has really come along for us. Um, uh, you know, just I don't know if you had a chance to see the play he made yesterday in practice. That was a heck of an interception. You know, we, we showed that as long as well as Carlos's interception to the group yesterday. But uh, plays like that, we think he's capable of making those plays. He's been an outstanding special teams player for us. I know he loves him. Uh, we think he's more than capable of, of, of contributing to us on defense in a bigger way. And we'll see how it goes throughout training camp. Uh, but we'd like to carve out a bigger role for him. Uh, but the way Taron Johnson has played, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to get some reps, but, but we'll see. But we're excited about his potential, and we'll see where, where it goes. Let's get back to when you guys drafted Saran. I mean, Mike and Jordan both said that he's one of the freakiest athletes that you guys have on the team. What was the process of you know, finding the right home for him and you know, bringing him along, being that he can play in a few different spots? Yeah, he's, he's such a, a versatile athlete. You know, we took a look at him at safety. We played him at nickel a little bit, played him at corner. We think we found a home for him, both at the nickel and the corner position uh, with his athletic ability and uh, his ability to run and tackle. Uh, you know, he's a smart football player. So he has a, he brings a lot, but he's so valuable for us on special teams. Uh, you know, his role gets a little bit limited on defense because he's one of our top special teams players as well. But we know if we have an injury, we feel like we could plug him in. And uh, I think in 19, uh, Taron was injured. Um, Saran had to play maybe four or five games, and I think we went undefeated in those games, and he played really well for us on defense. So we know he's capable, just a matter of finding some time for him. Leslie, have you seen any kind of focus in Levi this offseason? I remember when you guys brought in Josh Norman last year, he said that kind of stuff never really phases Levi, but with, I mean, all the outside noise about drafting a cornerback, about Dane challenging for a starting spot. Has there been kind of a, an uptick in, in what you've seen from him? Yeah. Levi, he, um, he's a really mellow guy when it comes to things like that. I mean, he, he's really focused on, on, on who he is and, and what he brings to the table. I'm, I, you know, just in talking with him and, and, and going through some of this, uh, Marcel, I don't think he's too concerned about who we bring to camp or – uh, who someone might say is his competition, he's much more concerned with getting his game where it needs to be. And that's that's the right attitude. That's the way it should be. Uh, it should be about Levi and not, you know, worrying about things I can't control. And I think that's one of the reasons each time there's been a challenge, you know, he's been able to rise to the challenge. And um, I'd be surprised if this year is any different. So. How does FA's versatility allow you um, to kind of move the chess pieces around, so to speak, yeah. when it all shakes out, especially when it comes to numbers? Like that. Without giving away strategy, like, do you see him as a certain fit somewhere, or is he the guy that you're gonna kind of play with and move around and see? Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. I was talking with uh, F.A. Yes, at the end of yesterday's practice, just trying to get a feel for how he's getting acclimated to our environment and what we're doing and how we're doing things. And you know, he's really fired up, uh, looking forward to the challenge. And 
I talked to him also, Sal, about what you just mentioned, being able to play a little bit inside, play some outside, because he has that type of versatility. And he said, Coach, I can't wait to get the pads on so I can use my power. I need to be able to use my power. But he's one of those guys that we're counting on to be able to move around a little bit and try to create some mismatches with uh, along the way. And hopefully he can stay healthy. Uh, that He had a little bit of a, a hiccup uh, last season. And if he stays healthy, we think he's a guy who could really give us quality depth and create some problems for offenses. How have you seen Tremaine grow as a leader behind the scenes over the years? I mean, he came in, obviously, to, as a rookie, he was a pretty quiet guy, at least publicly. And, I mean, here he is the leader of your defense. And you, you mentioned him earlier about how things seem seamless with him. So behind the scenes, how, how have you seen him grow yeah. over the years? Probably the biggest thing in, in observing him uh, in the off season with the OTAs and now in training camp, these early days of training camp, the confidence. His confidence level is very high, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that he's been in this system now for a while, and he also knows that the coaching staff really believes in him along with his teammates. I think that's really uh, hit him, you know, finally. I think along the way he was feeling like I – got to prove myself. I got to show him. And I think he finally realizes that we all believe in him. Uh, we trust him. Uh, I mean, you're the, the, the coordinator of the defense on the field. You're the guy. You're running the show. And uh, he's kind of embraced that more so now than, than what I recall in the past. And that's good for our defense, good for our players. Uh, they trust him. They look to him for, for leadership. And uh, the fact that he's embraced that and showing the confidence that goes along with that, it's really good for us. That's well, what I've seen. Following along with that same line of questioning there on Tremaine, and I want to fold Ed Oliver into this too. Coming in, going into this season now, year three and year four, whatever it is, do you need those guys to make big plays? I mean, game-altering plays. Because if we looked at it, that would be the one thing we really haven't seen from two first-round guys is making those game-changing plays that you might expect from a first-rounder. Do you need more of that this year? Yeah, I'm sure if you were to ask them that question, that's exactly what they, they would want to answer. Yes, uh, I need to make more game-changing plays. Tremaine would say that, and so would Ed. I mean, that's something we've talked to him about. Uh, we need that, uh, not only from those two guys, but some other guys as well. But I mean, we, we expect with their ability and, and the fact that they are – uh, two premier players for us on defense. We need those impact plays, those splash plays, and they're capable. Uh, you know, Ed's done it for us in the past. Tremaine can do it. Uh, so, yes, that would be the next step in their development uh, to be able to create those splash plays on a consistent basis. And like I mentioned, they're, they're capable of doing it. Leslie, you just talked about this match. Going back to what we talked about, Basham and, 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 and Rousseau, because Brandon talked about how the guys can play the outside and inside, um, or they could, they, they, there's the projection or they have the experience of playing outside and inside. How many more mismatches do you think as this defense progresses and these, as these guys get to know the system, do you think you can create on the field as the season goes on? Yeah, I mean, uh, Carlos is another guy who we think can create some of that for us. I mean, he's a big defensive end. He's not the linear type guy that you see sometimes like a Greg is, but with both of them, we, we, we think we can get to that point where we can start saying, okay, how does Greg match up to this guy? Or how does Carlos match up to this guy? But that's kind of like down the line because of where they are in their careers. And so we'll see how it unfolds, John, uh, as time goes on. But we know in watching their college tape, that was kind of what we were thinking when we talked about drafting them, that they could be those type of players, those matchup uh, problems for offenses. But uh, some of that depends on how quickly they develop. Uh, so we'll see. You know. Leslie, going back to that right corner battle, you talked about Levi. Uh, what have you seen from Dane Jackson, and just how is he handling the fact that he is competing for a starting job yeah. just in his sophomore season? Yeah. No, he, he's excited. Uh, Dane... You know, we saw this last season. When he got in games, uh, it wasn't too big for him. He made, made some big-time plays for us, uh, you know, in the games that he played. And uh, he's embraced this opportunity. He's looking forward to the challenge of being able to compete for a starting job. And uh, he's working his tail off in the short time that we've been here. And, you know, we're looking forward to seeing how it all unfolds. But uh, he's not afraid of the challenge. He's looking forward to it. Leslie, how impressed are you with the, the depth at linebacker? You've got five or six guys that have been extended, you know, productive in the NFL, and specifically a guy like Terrell Adams, who just coming off a breakout season in Houston, 
trying to come here and be a part of this group. Yeah, this is the probably the best depth we've had at linebacker since we've been here. So it's it's created some good competition for us uh, in the linebacker room and on the field as well. And uh, we'll see how all, all unfolds. Now, those guys are going to have to contribute for us on special teams because, as you mentioned, everybody can't start. Uh, but the depth is really good and it's needed because uh, you never know when you're going to lose a guy. Uh, but we're excited about the fact that we had a type of depth that we do have. What has Adam been like as a personality in the locker room? I mean, it seems like a, a guy that's, you know, lights up a room, that kind of thing. Has he been a, an impact in that way? He has. Um, we, were, we were in a meeting yesterday, and I came in, and I was telling the guys how we were going to start practice. And I was telling them that Terrell, um, that Terrell Dotson was going to be the guinea pig. He was going to be the guy that was leading. And, and, I, and, I, and someone said, uh, T.A., you good with that? It's called him T.A. Uh, Terrell Adams. And he says, uh, who did you say, Coach? Did You didn't say Dotson, did you? Yeah, Terrell Dotson. He goes, that guy, you know, just, just, just not giving uh, Terrell the, the, the upper hand uh, when it comes to you know, what he has to, to get done. And, uh, but that's, that's kind of what he's brought to the table, a little bit of lightness, which is good, uh, but a guy who's a very good football player, as you referenced what he did in Houston, and uh, he should be a guy that should be able to help us uh, in the locker room as well as, you know, what we do on the field. But he, uh, he, he's a good player, but he definitely has a sense of humor. So, there was a bunch of talk about Star, Ed, even Harrison Phillips going into his fourth year being a draft pick. Is Justin Zimmer kind of the forgotten man based on what he did for you last year? Yeah, he's not forgotten in my eyes. I mean, he, he did a terrific job for us a season ago, and uh, myself and the coaches, uh, Eric Washington and Jock Cezera, the D-line coaches, they've referenced a number of times. Don't forget about Justin Zimmer. I mean, he... He epitomizes what you look for in a football player, the way he works, uh, the way he approaches every single practice, every meeting. Uh, he's a lunch pail guy, and uh, he did a great job for us, and um, he's a tough out. You know, he's going he's gonna to battle every single step and, you know, expect him to have a great camp as well. But he's not forgotten in our eyes. So, all right, thank you. Thanks,